Greetings and good day everyone and welcome once again to the Baptist Spread Devotional and Scripture Song Broadcast for this 12th day of November. And it's Sunday and we're starting a whole new week here and we are in the middle of the month, or almost the middle of the month. And today's topic is titled, Living Like a Lion. And before we get started on all of that, I'd like to greet you as always in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who is the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. And he's the only one that can wash away your sin and give you eternal life. So whatever you're trusting in, if you're not trusting in Jesus Christ and his death, burial, and resurrection alone, then you can't be saved. And so it's time to turn from what you're trusting in, whether it be water baptism or going to church or paying your tithes or trying to work your way to heaven. None of those things can give you eternal life. It's through Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. Amen. So I hope you get that settled in your heart today. So we're going to start with today's scripture song from 1 Samuel 16, 7. But before we get into that, I want to read you the context here of what's going on here in chapter 16. So let's go ahead and I'll read you starting here in verse 1 of 1 Samuel 16. And it says, And the Lord said unto Samuel, How long wilt thou mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? Fill thine horn with oil, and go. I will send thee to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided me a king among his sons. And Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hear it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take an heifer with thee, and say, I am come to sacrifice to the Lord. And call Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will shew thee what thou shalt do. And thou shalt anoint unto me him whom I name unto thee. And Samuel did that which the Lord spake, and came to Bethlehem. And the elders of the town trembled at his coming, and said, Comest thou peaceably? And he said, Peaceably, I am come to sacrifice unto the Lord. Sanctify yourselves, and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons, and called them to the sacrifice. And it came to pass, when they were come, that he looked on El Elab, and said, Surely the Lord's anointed is before him. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance, or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth, for man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab, and made him passed before Samuel, and he said, Neither hath the Lord chosen this. Then Jesse made Sh uh, Shem Shema to pass, and he said, Neither hath the Lord chosen this. Again Jesse made seven of his sons to pass before Samuel, and Samuel said unto Jesse, The Lord hath not chosen thee these. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Are, there, are here all thy children? And he said, that There remaineth yet the youngest, and behold, he keepeth the sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Send and fetch him, for we will not sit down till he come hither. And he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy, and withal of a beautiful countenance, and goodly to look at, or look to. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. <coughs> Excuse me. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren and the spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward so Samuel rose up and went to Ramah and then so on and so forth um, the rest of the passage there you can read on your own time there but that's uh, the first uh, 13 uh, verses there talking about what happened there and now we'll go ahead and get into the scripture song <clears throat> and sing this first and then get into the topic for today. So go ahead and sing along with Brother Dean and Sister Patty. Here we go. First Samuel sixteen seven. But, but the Lord, Lord said unto Samuel, Samuel Look not on his countenance, or on, on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth, for man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. On the heart. On the heart. Yeah, that's right. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not 
on his countenance or on the height of his stature. Because I have refused him for the Lord, see it not as man see it. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. Not as man seeth, but the Lord looketh on the heart. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth, but the Lord looketh on the heart. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. The Lord look it on the heart. That's right. So that is the scripture song. And we'll put that back to yesterday's scripture song and do those again towards the end of the broadcast. But now it's time to get into today's Baptist bread uh, for Sunday, November 12th, 2023. And today's topic is titled Living Like a Lion. And it says here in Proverbs 28, 1, The wicked flee when no man pursueth, but the righteous are bold as a lion. <laughs> Brother Dean has a scripture song uh, that he did on this verse um, for the month of December. And so we'll do that uh, when we get to that later on uh, at the end of the year there. But uh, good passage there from Proverbs 28, 1, The wicked flee when no man pursueth, but the righteous are bold as a lion. And today's author is Brother Guy Goodall. And he is, <clears throat> where is he, a pastor of Greater Glens Falls Bible Baptist Church in Hudson Falls, New York. It's funny how this uh, gets changed all the time. One minute it's uh, Bible Baptist Church in Hudson Falls, New York. And then it gets changed to Greater Glens Falls Bible Baptist Church in Hudson Falls, New York. So it must be that he goes back and forth or or perhaps that last month the uh, last two months it was the wrong uh, church that was listed so anyway he's the pastor of this uh, church here and let me read you what he uh, wrote today on this topic of living like a lion <clears throat> and it says here he writes here I have watched videos of lions taking on water buffaloes elephants and other wild creatures God's people often have to take on opponents who are a powerful threat to them, or so we think are a powerful threat, but there's no one more powerful than the Lord. So, and all man can do is uh, kill the body, but the Lord can kill the body and soul and spirit, and, uh, or the body and soul in hell. So, all right. So, again, he says, uh, God's people often have to take on opponents who are a powerful threat to them, and uh, so we see here, it uh, um, says here that then Paul and Barnabas wax bold, see Acts 13.46. So let's look at that passage there and <clears throat> get the context of this. So Acts, the book of Acts chapter 13. We'll go there and look at this. So Acts 13 and verse 46. All right, so 46, so let's go up to 44, and it says, And the next Sabbath day came almost the whole city uh, together to hear the word of God. But when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy, and spake against those things which were spoken by Paul, contradicting and blaspheming. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, it was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you, but seeing ye put it from you, and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. For so hath the Lord commanded us, saying, I have set thee to be a light of the Gentiles, that thou shouldest be for salvation unto the ends of the earth. And when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad, and 
glorify the word of the Lord. Amen. And as many as were ordained to eternal life believed, and the word of the Lord was published throughout all the region. But the Jews stirred up the devout and honorable women and the chief men of the city and raised persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them out of their coasts. But they shook off the dust of their feet against them and came unto Iconium, and the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. So that's some context there. So that was the first thing. So then Paul and Barnabas waxed all uh, bold, and we just looked at the passage there from Acts 13, 46. And next we have, but Isaiah is very bold. And that's Romans 10.20. And so let's look at that really quick. Romans 10.20. <clears throat> and go to the book of Romans. Romans chapter 10 and verse 20. So it says here, um, let's see. I don't want to read the whole entire uh, chapter here, but there's 21 verses. So I encourage you to read that on your own time. It says here in verse 20, But Isaiah is very bold, and saith, I was found of them that sought me not. I was made manifest unto them that asked not of me, or not after me, excuse me, not after me, but to Israel. He saith, All day long I have stretched forth my hands unto a disobedient and gainsaying people. So that is um, God there um, speaking uh, through uh, Isaiah's, or I, Isaiah there, so that was that uh, passage there, and then next it says, uh, Now I, Paul, being absent, am bold toward you, Second Corinthians 10, 1, so that's the passage there, and it says, We were bold in our God to speak unto you the gospel of God with much contention, First Thessalonians 2, 2, Encourage you to read all that passage, uh, chapter there also. And then he continues on. He writes, Peter and John threatened for preaching Jesus were bold while being respectful of the religious leaders on the council. Acts 4.13.2 uh, He says, And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they spake the word of God with boldness. Verse 31 of Acts 4. And he continues on here and says, writes here, What makes a true believer bold in presenting Jesus Christ to others? <clears throat> so here's the three things here, or four things I should say. So this is um, what makes a true believer bold in presenting Jesus Christ to others. Um, and the first is, one must have a genuine relationship with the Son of God himself. Acts 4.13 says they had been with Jesus. Second, one must place the word of God in a position higher than the words of men. See Acts 4.29. They prayed God would enable them to preach with boldness. So let's look at Acts 4.29. And look at that. So Acts... 429. All right, so Acts 429, and read this passage here. It says, And now, Lord, behold their threatenings, and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word by stretching forth thine hand to heal, and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of the Holy or by um, by the name of thy holy child Jesus so let's go back up here to verse 23 and get context here so verse 23 says and being let go they went to their own company and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said unto them and when they heard that they were lifted up their voice to God with one accord and said Lord thou art God which hast made heaven and earth and the sea and all that in them is who by the mouth of thy servant David 
hast said, Why did the heathen rage, and the people imagine vain things? The kings of the earth stood up, and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. For of a truth against thy holy ch child Jesus, whom thou hast anointed both uh, Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and the people of Israel, were gathered together, for to do whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel determined before to be done. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings, and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word by stretching forth thine hand to heal, and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child Jesus. So that's the context there. I encourage you to go back and read the entirety of chapter 4 so you can get more of what's going on there um, with uh, uh, the disciples there and the apostles. All right, so the first again was... Um, so let me reread this to, these to you. So, what makes a true believer bold in presenting Jesus Christ to others? First, one must have a genuine relationship with the Son of God Himself, Acts 4.13, which says they had been with Jesus. Second, one must place the Word of God in a position higher than the words of men. And it says, see Acts 4.29, which we just read. They prayed God would enable them to preach with boldness. Third, one must be willing to accept unpleasant outcomes for obeying God over man. They had already uh, been incarcerated and threatened with persecution if they continued to preach in Jesus' name. And then fourth and final, says one must pray for God's intervention as they obey him. Verse 31, and then he writes here in big bold letters, Are you bold as a lion? Hmm. So let's be bold as a lion and not back down when opposition comes and keep on getting the gospel out, amen, and the truth out from God's word. So those are the uh, four points there. If you like to take notes, I encourage you to do so on these uh, four points from this topic, Living Like a Lion. And that is it for the Baptist Bread today. And now I'll go ahead and get into the Daily Strength Volume 1 book. And we are starting on the second week of Prudence, week 41, which is titled Prudence Continued. So I'll read you all the introductory stuff here and the passage for today. And then we'll read some fight on stories. Or I'll read them to you and you can listen along and then get into today's hymn. So we have here week 41, Prudence Continued. And it says here, Occurrences found 23 times in the Old Testament and 5 times in the New Testament First usage in the New Testament is Matthew 11:25, which is prudent, and then the last usage in the Old Testament is Amos 5:13, which is also prudent. And then we have an interesting fact here: the Scripture specifically identifies only two people as having prudence, and the first is David. And here's the references: 1 Samuel 16:18 and 2 Chronicles 2:12, and then Christ Jesus. Amen. Isaiah 52, 13. So these are the only two people having prudence. And then the Bible study tip says, Determine how you learn and retain information. Some people learn best by reading, others through sight, others by hearing, yet others with more hands-on type experience. You will benefit most by implementing within your studies various effective methods of learning Paul refers to learning, receiving, hearing, and seeing. Philippians 4, 9 is the reference. And now we have the week here. So Sunday, day 281 is a church day, no devotional. Monday, day 282 is titled, The Worth of a Prudent Man. Tuesday, day 283 is titled, False Prudence. Wednesday, 284, day 284 is church night, no devotional. Thursday, day 285 is titled, A Prudent wife is from the Lord. And then Friday, day 286 is titled, My Servant Shall Deal Prudently. And then Saturday, do day 287, The Prudent Desire to Hear the Word is the title for the last day of the second week on prudence. So, should be an interesting week here on this topic um, here. So, day 281 is church day. 
And Proverbs 12, 16 says, A fool's wrath is presently known, but a prudent man covereth shame. So that is the passage for today. And now I'll go ahead and grab the Fight On, the more Fight On book uh, here and read these two Fight On stories for today from the More Fight On Stories book by Sam Gipp. Uh, more amazing stories about those have, who have persevered through hardship and danger. And the first story is titled Fragile Bridge to Safety. And it says here, uh, Sao Paulo is Brazil's largest city. That's S-A-O P-A-U-L-O Sao Paulo is Brazil's largest city. In 1974, the 25 story Joma building was one of its newest buildings. On February 1st, 1974, it became the site of one of Brazil's greatest tragedies. 650 people were in the building that day when the fire broke out on the 11th floor. Those below the fire quickly escaped, but 350 people were cut off above the blaze as it traveled up the structure. Many tried dashing down the stairwells through the flames only to become, be overcome and die. Others huddled on the roof, begging, circling helicopters to rescue them though the heat was so intense that they could not land. While spectators looked on in horror, many victims, trapped by the flames, chose to leap to their deaths rather than burn. All told, 227 people were to die in the conflagration. Worst of all was the discovery that the fire department was ill-prepared to fight the ablaze in a modern skyscraper. Uh, <laughs> their ladders weren't long enough, nor their hoses powerful enough to reach the upper floors. They were reduced to holding up signs that assured the victims, Courage, we are with you. <laughs> but not all firemen were thwarted. Some entered adjoining buildings and shot lines over to the burning structure. Then they crossed the thin strand and with uh, hanging onto their backs hauled individuals to safety. Fireman Jose Fino was just making a return trip with a man desperately gripping his back when many floors above him a hopeless victim cast himself out into eternity to avoid being incinerated. The falling man plummeted right into Fino and his package, and uh, then bounced off and continued his fall. Well, the grip of the man on Rafino's back was broken, and he too fell to his death. Rafino clung desperately to the tiny rope, trying to keep from becoming the third victim of the incident. Finally, he steadied himself and made his way to safety. After he was checked over, he was back on the rope, bringing helpless passengers to safety. Eighteen times, Jose Rufino made that trip successfully. Fight on. Wow. Quite a story there. And now the second story is titled Deep Safety. It says here, Kellogg, Idaho, was the site of a tragic fire in one of its silver mines in 1972. The mine descended almost a mile underground and was a sprawling uh, entity that had been likened to a huge underground apartment house. On May 2nd, 700 feet below the surface, a fire started by spontaneous combustion filled the mine shafts with deadly smoke. While the fire raged, rescue teams descended into the depths of the mine looking for survivors but returning only with bodies. All, towed, uh, all told, 91 men died in the accident. 93 were missing. Uh, when the smoke first filled the shafts, Tom Wil Wilkinson and Tom Flory and seven other miners tried to get out but were trapped below due to inoperable elevators. They knew they had only one hope 
to go deeper into the mind or the mine, they had been told that in the event of a fire, fresh air would be pumped into the lowest portions it was. The nine men struggled through the heat, smoke, and deadly carbon monoxide, racing downward, hoping to reach good air before they were asphyxiated. Uh, one, uh, Tom, uh, one Tom fell, and the other dragged him to the safety of a lower shaft 4,800 4, feet below the surface. Having secured his co-worker, he then stumbled back for the others, but one by one he found only seven bodies. He then returned to his partner and waited. A day passed, then two, three, then four. The lights on their helmets finally faded and died. The men groped in the darkness and found other miners' lunch pails and fed themselves in the inky blackness. Five days, then six. After a week, the two tried, or to do, the two tired, desperate men heard the voices of a search party looking for the last bodies of the 93 miners who had been trapped by the fire. To their shock and joy, they found them alive. The men were sent to the surface in a rescue capsule to the delight of their families and fellow workers. They were the only two survivors, refusing to give up. They had struggled on through the smoke, heat, and darkness as their lungs cried for air until they had finally made it to a safe haven deep beneath the surface of the earth. Fight on! So, that's the second story. And final story for today from the fight, More Fight On uh, Stories book. And so next time we'll do uh, three stories here. So, the first story will be titled Not Accepting Defeat. Second story will be titled Stubborn Defender. And then the third and final story for next time will be titled He Kept His Word. So, amen. So, two tragic stories about different fires in different places. One was, um, the first one was, took place in, um, Brazil, and the second one took place in a mine, uh, silver mine shaft, and so if you missed those, uh, check those out, and go back and listen to this in its entirety, so amen, all right, now I'll go ahead and sing today's hymn, and only one hymn today, but it is a good hymn, so hopefully I can sing most of it, it's not too hard of a tune, so the stanzas try to sing this here with the uh, instrumental as many as i can and this is another one of these consecration of the saint hymns a spiritual song and this is hymn 556 in the psalms and hymns and spiritual songs book it's titled praise the savior ye who know him and this is written by thomas kelly who lived from 1769 to 1855 traditional german melody arranged by anonymous and there's five stanzas here. So I'll try to sing a couple of them with the instrumental. So here we go. Praise the Savior, ye who know him, who can tell how much we owe him. Gladly let us render to him all we are and have Jesus is the name that charms us that for conflict fits and arms us nothing moves and nothing harms us when we trust in him trust in him ye saints forever he is faithful changing never neither force nor God can sever those he loves from him. He keep us, Lord, oh, keep us cleaving to thyself and still believing till the time of our receiving promised joy in heaven. Sing 
this last one acapella sorry about that so uh then we shall be where we sh would be then we shall be what we should be that which is not now nor could be will then be our own hallelujah so that is the hymn there and good hymn and now let me give you the references here so stanza one we have first peter 4 1 through 2 and galatians 2 20 and then stanza 2 is psalm 20 verse 7 and psalm 16 8 stanza 3 is hebrews 13 8 and romans 8 35 to 39 Stanza 4 is Acts 11.23 and John 14.1-3. And then stanza 5 is 1 John 3.1-3 and Philippians 1.23-24. So that is the end of today's hymn. So, alright. I don't know what I did with that. There it is. Looking for the bookmark there. Alright, now we'll go ahead and do the scripture songs one more time. And we'll wrap it up for today. So yesterday's scripture song was from John 6, 33 through 35. So press play here and sing along with Brother John Dean and 6, Sister Patty. 33 through 35. For the bread of Amen. God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. Then said they unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. All right, let's sing along. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven, and giveth life unto the world. God is he which cometh down from heaven and give life unto the world and said they unto him Lord evermore give us this bread and Jesus said unto them I am the bread of life he that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. Unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. Give us this bread. That's right. All right. Now today's one more time. <clears throat> First Samuel sixteen seven. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. Man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. That's right. So let's sing this here. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance, or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him for the Lord. See it not as man see it. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. For the Lord see it not as man see it. Look it on the heart, for the Lord seeth not as man seeth, but the Lord look it on the heart, for the Lord seeth not as man seeth, but the Lord 
look at down the heart. All right. So, that is it for today's broadcast. But before I go, let me give you tomorrow's uh, scripture song. And then the topic for the Baptist Bread and Daily Strength uh, devotional books. And then the hymns for tomorrow. So, tomorrow will be the 13th. And we're singing Psalms 150, verse 6. It says, Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Amen. So that is tomorrow's scripture song. And then tomorrow's topic for the Baptist bread is going to be titled, Our Ears, Our Heart. And Proverbs 17.4 is the passage. So that will be tomorrow's topic. And that's for the Baptist bread. And then the daily strength uh, topic as we're continuing on in the second week. Or actually we're starting it tomorrow. Today we did the introductory stuff. So tomorrow will be the first topic for uh, Prudence Continued, week 41, and tomorrow is day 282, Monday, and it's titled, The Worth of a Prudent Man, and Isaiah 3, verses 1 through 3 is the passage, and then we have the um, song here, it's titled, Be Firm and Be Faithful, and not too familiar with this hymn, so that will be uh, the one from the book, and then the second hymn, or actually the first hymn, will be titled, um, temples of the Holy Ghost and this one I'm not too familiar with either so this will be hymn 557 in the Psalms and Hymns and Spiritual Songs book along with the second hymn from the Daily Strength book so both of these will be unfamiliar uh, to me tomorrow and uh, so this is now one of these consecration of the Saint Hymns, a spiritual song so no story for this one there's seven stanzas here so we'll find the instrumental for these, hopefully, or at least a sampling, and then you can listen to it, and then I'll read you the stanzas if they're hard to sing along with. So that's that, and then the Baptist or the daily um, or the hymn book here. Keep on getting these all messed up here. So this is the hymn book, the Psalms and Hymns and Spiritual Songs book, and that's the cover to it. That's what it looks like. Three different covers there, and then the Daily Strength Volume One book this is the cover to that and there's four volumes to this series of books and they're all available to order on melodypublications.com is the website and then you got the more fight on book stories here by samuel gipp and that's uh available to order on um daystarpublishing.com the website there and all his books are available to check out if you see any are interesting to you so that's by sam gipp and then the daily scripture song book and CDs are available on Brother Dean and Sister Patty Runyon's website, and that's www.dailyscripturesongs.com is their website, Missionaries to Port Kaituma, Guyana. And Brother Dean uh, made an announcement yesterday, or the day before, in his prayer letter um, that he'll be flying back to uh, the States to get some um, work done um, on his physical body so he can get that working um, and see what's going on with him. And Sister Patty's staying in. Guyana, why he's here, not sure how long he'll be here for, but he'll be flying back to Florida tomorrow, so pray for him and his flight, that he has safe journeys here, and the doctors can fix him up as uh, as much as possible, so he can continue to serve the Lord while he's here on this earth, and be able to go back to Guyana, and be um, back there, so amen, so that's that, and then the Baptist Bread devotional book is available to order on baptistbread.com or www.timgreenministries.org and that second website has other books available to order and if you missed the topics for today i encourage you to go back and listen to them and uh pray for brother guy goodall as he's battling with cancer and many in uh, the church house at bible baptist are dealing with cancer and other health issues so um so pray for him brother goodall there and then uh, that's the uh, information for the Baptist bread. And then the Bible, the King James Bible, the Word of God, is the first book we should always be getting into and reading it and studying it and looking to God and seeking His face and asking Him to show us what He has for us to see as we're studying His Word. And uh, also, Brother Ed and Brother James had good messages to s- this morning from the Sunday school hour and the morning sermon as Brother James is continuing through Second Thessalonians talking about what we're to do uh, to prepare for the coming of the Antichrist, and quite a message there on what we're to do. So 
check those out at James uh, Knox Sermons YouTube channel or www.jameswnox.org. And uh, praise the Lord uh, for those messages this morning. So check those out. And then also, um, if you know somebody doesn't have Facebook, you can direct them to the YouTube channel by going to Ambassador for Christ Broadcasting or typing in Baptist Bread Broadcast and look me up that way. And like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you know when I'm posting these up after I do the live uh, stream broadcast on Facebook. So, amen. All right, well, Lord willing, I'll see you tomorrow. So, thanks for watching, and may the Lord richly bless you until next time. Bye-bye for now.